So, as you know, I've been having a, I wouldn't say hard time, but just not optimal time uh, knocking out these OQL games and cataloging in a timely fashion. Um, I'm, t I'm averaging about 50 minutes per game, and it, it's, I'm getting like four done a day, but I just I really want to power through these. I think I can do better. Uh, I'm going to try to get it down to maybe 40 minutes per game, so like... Uh, 20% more efficient and I think last night I discovered a way to do it and I did it just now and it felt faster but I was a little distracted and I wanted to time it like for real for real so uh, I'm gonna record this video and like with full concentration see how long it takes um, basically bef the f when I first started doing this I would answer the questions and catalog each one as I go so I'm doing uh, no division of labor. I'm, I'm basically um, I'm answering and cal uh, two completely different tasks uh, horizontally. Then I switched to answering all of them first, then going back and cataloging each one. So completely vertically aligned, basically. Um, that seemed to be a little more efficient because... Uh, I, I could switch gear, like answering all of them in a row, I could do it like rapid speed and then cataloging and my mind is in catalog mode. But it still didn't feel like the most efficient it could be. I discovered this last night and I tweaked it a little and I'm doing it like this now. I'm, go, I'm answering the first four rounds in a row. So vertically, vertical alignment, uh, answer them. Then when I start answering in the second half, while the first half questions are still fresh in my mind, I answer one in round five, and I immediately catalog that and its partner. Sometimes they can be very similar, uh, and you'll see what I mean in a moment. Other times it can be a little different. The only real trouble I've run into with this method is sometimes um, I, I can't immediately remember what the partner question was especially when it comes to stuff like I didn't really understand the answer to, like stuff that's super obscure. But about 75% of the time, I can remember exactly what the partner question was immediately. So that makes, I feel like this is faster. Um, so I'm gonna try that, I'm gonna start it, I'm gonna try it starting now. Um, my session is gonna start at the three minute mark. So whatever I end on will, um, uh, take three minutes away and that'll, that'll let me know how fast this way goes. So let's try it. 2020 film On the Rocks, directed by Sofia Coppola, stars Bill Murray as a file. Which actress plays a daughter? Scarlett Johansson? Or is that, that's lost in translation, right? But whatever, I'll just say Scarlett Johansson. Nope, okay. Uh, which pro Canadian province features a white fox? Yukon? No. For the vast majority of his career with the Bulls, MJ worked 23, okay. However, what number did he score? 45, super easy. In Britain, a Mars bar is a confectionery tree containing nougat and caramel, all wrapped in milk. Under what celestial name? Milky Way? Who is the first man of indigenous origin serve as president of Mexico? Uh, these are the years, so probably Benito Juarez. Yep. What is the five letter name of the largest object series? Yep. Soundgarden, Flea Fox, Jimi Hendrix, or Musical Ass from, from which city in the Western? Uh, Seattle. Palaman and Arsite are the title pair in which play? Co written by Fletcher and Shakespeare. Play's plot is based on Knight's Tale. I don't think I know this. Knight's Tale, gotta think of a pair. Knight's Tale, gotta think of a pair. No, I got nothing. All right. Of the four Grand Slam tournaments, which one is played on clay? French Open. Uh, what is this? Kamala Harris's middle name? Wow, that's a good one. I don't know. Debbie. Okay. In addition to being a two-time recipient of Best Actress, which film star also received Best Supporting for Murder on the Orient Express? Two-time... Best Actress, two-time Best Actress. I feel like Katherine Hepburn might have won more than two. Meryl Streep, it's a little early for her. Diane 
Excuse me. No, it's a little early, but I'll say Catherine Hepburn. Okay. Which river rises in the Dracula Mountains in Lesotho and empties into the Atlantic? Along the way, the river forms borders with Lesotho, South Africa, and Namibia. Orange. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's the only river I can think of in South Africa, so lucky guess. Bill Evans, Thelonious Monk, Diana Krall with jazz musicians, closely with uh, piano. The English tenor Peter Piers was a frequent collaborator and life partner of which composer, English composer born in 1913? Life partner, so probably a dude. Um, um, hmm. Um, Elgin? Oh, of course, duh. Ah, uh, probably gettable. Among all of the individual winners of the NPP, one pair of recipients shares a surname. 1976 from UK, honored for her work in 1990s in, in Northern Ireland. 1997 from US, honored for her work um, from landmines. Okay. The only, the only person, no, I don't, this is not a good guess, Robinson. No, Williams. Betty Williams, Jody Williams. Never heard of either. Crossing a domestic cat, an Egyptian male with an Asian leopard cat results in a cat hybrid with what name? Uh, Bengal. I'm sorry, I read ahead. I saw it. I saw a tiger in Indian Ocean. I didn't read the clues that were the key parts, but I read it in my head ahead of time. Um, what is the three-word name of the band formed by formed in 1981 by wife and husband Tina Weymouth? Oh, I've seen that name. Um, um, as a oh no, I was gonna say Talking Heads. Never mind. Never mind. I saw Tina Weymouth and I was like, oh, Talking Heads, but it's not the answer. Yeah. Mathematical mathematical constant e is a transcendental number. It is roughly equivalent to what? One decimal place? Two point seven. I mean, yeah, 2.7. It's listed as 3 here for stupid reasons. Uh, to which historical leader is Vinny Vitivici? That's JC. Blind Assassin are, is by uh, Atwood, right? Hold on. Where is it Monroe? Hmm, I don't want to get this wrong. No, I think it is Atwood. Okay, good. Um, what is the name of the Canadian American video game programmer who is currently the director of development at Fire Axis Games, godfather of computer gaming? Is that the Sim guy? Um, what's the, okay? First of all, what is even his name? Sid Meier. Oh wow! The Inselberg, formerly known as Ayers Rock, is uh, Aluru. In which 1949 play by Arthur Miller's Willie Lo uh, Death Row Salesman? Uh, who is the host of Radiotopia podcast, 99% Invisible? Also, uh, I, I have never gotten a podcast question right in my life. Um, no, I got nothing. Okay. Um, round four. In North mythology, Freya travels in a chariot drawn by a pair of what creature? In Egyptian mythology, these are closely related to... Bastet. So a mammal that's in both North mythology and North, I can't talk, Norse mythology and Egyptian mythology. Horse. Mm, I mean, it's too obvious. Why would they ask a chariot and then just make the answer a horse? Goat? I don't think I have anything better than goat as an answer. I guess I'll say goat. Cat, cat. I can see the Egyptian angle, but Freya's chariot is drawn by cats. That's crazy. Degas, Renoir, and Cassatt are all. Oh my god, impressionism. Stupid. Released in 2020 and sharing its name with an eponymous debut single. What is Aria Grande's most recent full-length album? Refers to neither yoga nor team sports. I got nothing. Positions aren't. 
In geology, a loess is a word of German origin that refers to accumulated sediment of dust, typically made in by this that is previously carried around by probably a river, right? I mean, oh no, wind. Jeez. Okay. Um, which man provided the original voice of Bugs Bunny? Mel Blanc. Yep. What is the name of the 6th century BCE sage who is considered the founder of Jainism? His teachings were... Mm, I feel like I've seen this name before, but I probably I can't recall it. Founder of Jainism. Founder of Jainism. Founder of Jainism. It's like Nanu Gorak or something? No, what am I thinking of? Um, Mahavira. Okay. Two word answer required. Which soccer team plays its at Old Trafford? Manchester United? Honestly, honestly, the only reason I knew that is because it prompted for two word answer. And I know that, that that's like the most obvious one with two words in its name. And there's Manchester City also. So I kind of gained my way into that answer. Uh, that's not true knowledge. Um, Northwest and but you know those count too. Once I don't like, I would say twice per game in either OQL or Jeopardy. You'll you'll come across those where your knowledge isn't what's getting you to the answer. It's more like deducing the clue. So whatever, it's as, it's as good as a make. Uh, a bank is as good as a swish. Northwest Angle Inlet in Lake of the Woods is northernmost point. Um, that is in Minnesota. Okay. All right, so now I've done the first half. Now I'm going to, in the second half, I'm going to answer it and then immediately catalog it and its partner. Uh, this is out of place. Which, which man of European descent was the first to serve as president of Mexico? He was in office um, until 1829. Oh, I don't think I know this. Just before Santa Ana. <sighs> nope. Guadalupe Victoria. Okay, so that one is obviously with the Benito Juarez one, so that's history, world, political. Okay, that one and this one. Crossing a domestic cat, a Siamese with an African serval, results in a cat hybrid with what name? Uh, ecological, geographical ecosystem and a city in Georgia. A city in Georgia, it's also an ecosystem. Savannah, oh, Savannah, yeah. Okay. That, well, this is a clue where like the second half is everything. The first half doesn't help at all. I did not even know that Savannah is a breed of cat. See, I don't know if I would call that a cat breed clue because I feel like 95% of people get from the second part. So in that case, that would be geography American and what meteor climate yeah meteorology climatology okay. yeah i'm not even gonna call that cat but the other one was definitely a cat breeds one. Oh no no it wasn't this is the same thing. I, I only got it from the back end of the clue. So it has nothing to do with cats. The geography, world, and zoology. Okay. Oops, not world. World, uh, zoology. Okay. Of the four Grand Slam, which one's played on grass? Wimbledon. So that's uh, sports tennis. And I got the French Open one too. So that's two here. The American choreographer Mercy Cunningham is a frequent collaborator and life partner of which American composer? American, I don't know, Copeland. John Cage, okay. So I got both of those wrong. I got the Benjamin Britten one wrong. So that's classical music, early 1900s. Would you say that's culture also? Because we're talking about their personal lives? Mm, no, I think just knowing the composer should be able to tell me that. So two wrong, okay. Chet Baker, Clifford Brown, Wynton Marsalis are closely associated with that's trumpet. Uh, I got the piano one also, so that's pop music, jazz. What is the name of the second gentleman? Um, Emhoff, Doug Emhoff. 
So politics, American current. One right, one wrong. I didn't get the middle name part. All right. Rashida Jones had a busy 2020 in addition to On the Rocks. She also starred with what Netflix TV series created by Kenya Barris? I don't know. Black as fuck. Okay. TV streaming. And then what was the see this is an example of I don't quite remember what the partner clue was. Was it the other was it where the answer is just Rashida Jones? Yeah. Okay. 2020. Okay. Film post 2020. I'm I'm just gonna check real quick if it was also streaming. Film post 2020. Or post 2010, sorry. Um it's, this movie was called On the Rocks. Wikipedia film. Um, released on... Oh, no, it was theatrical. Okay. So just here, 12. Nice. All right, next question. Um, which river rises at Piku Mountain between China and North Korea? Yalu. And that was the partner of the Orange River one. So that's Geography World. Two right. Which man provided the original voice of Mickey Mouse? Huh. I feel like this should be common knowledge. Why don't I know this? I do not know. Um, Walt Disney himself. Oh! Oh! Did I know that in the back of my head? I, I must have, like, remembered that. Walt Disney himself was the right answer. Okay. Um, kids TV? Kids film? I guess. What would you classify that knowledge as? You're not really learning it by watching the kids movie or kids film. I don't really, there's nowhere else to put it. All right, kids film one, and then the other one's Mel Blanc, so kids TV one. It's not really the, I try to classify these based on the source of the knowledge. It's a little abstract, but there's a, re, there's a rhyme and reason to it. It's, some, a lot of it's very subjective. Like, if I think you can arrive at an answer in a clue through two equal directions, I'll I'll list it as both. If I if it's like again subjective, if I think like one is super obvious and the other is borderline impossible, I would only list the obvious one. But I, I with a lot of leeway, I, I assume that other people have other bases of knowledge that are different from mine, and I would still classify it as that. But th this one's tough to classify. Although it is occasionally underwater at high tide, Western Dry Rocks is the southernmost point in the contiguous uh, states. I mean Florida, right? Yeah, okay. So geography, American, and travel. That and Minnesota, so two right. Um, Tom Tom Club song, Genius of Love, is heavily sampled by Mariah Carey in what 1995 song? Um, the song in question is sing the second single to debut atop. A 1995 Mariah Carey song. Always be my baby seems a little early for that. Um, honey, no, it's a little early for that. Um, dream lover, a little early for that. I don't know. I'll say always be my baby. Fantasies. Oh, that's what that song is, sweet. Do do do. Do 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 do. That's the song. Okay, because that's the riff from Fantasy, but I did not know what the name of the original song was. The do 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 do. Okay, so pop music '80s. I got that one wrong, and then this one would be, I guess, '90s and '80s. Yeah, so this Mariah Carey one classifies as 80s and 90s. So, okay, so I got both of those wrong. Oh, 
call that nine beans. Okay. Next, what is the name of the third century BCE sage who is considered to be the founder of classical yoga? No idea. Pata Jolly. Wait, why is there a comma there? Is that one word or two? Okay, now I'm paranoid. Let's look this up. Pata Jolly. Uh, yeah, it's one word. Okay. So it's a, it's a single person, Pata Jolly. Uh, I didn't get this one or the Jainism one right. Uh, this one's yoga, so that's not quite the same. Niche Entertainment Yoga. I want to say that's like his. That's not real history. That's super specific to yoga. Let's just call it yoga. The other one's religion. Um, religion contributors. Yeah, because it's not really like a tenet of religion. So that, that's its own thing. Contributors. Got that one wrong too. Are any of these other religion ones have to be? Uh... Um, what is the name of Japanese video game, uh, game director whose uh, creations, uh, what's the guy's name? Oh my god, I can't believe I'm blanking on this. Miyamoto. Yeah. Shigeru, yeah, Miyamoto's his last name. This is clearly right. Yeah. Um, what was the partner question to that? Miyamoto, the see, like this is what I'm talking about. Once in a while, oh, Sid Meier, that's right. Once in a while, I forget what the partner question was, but I've got both of those. So video games too. Video game history. Hmm. Mm. No, just pure video game. All right, name of the impression school derives from a, um, that's Monet, that's super easy. I used to have that painting in my house, actually. Um, art, it was hanging in the living room. Art, impressionism, got both of those. Norse mythology, the god Thor travels in a chariot. And then Pan in Greek mythology. I feel like that actually is goat i think i've seen that before goat yes okay so i got goats right and i got cats wrong so let's go with mythology greco-roman no because it's not really the greco-roman part that gave it away it's the thor part so i won't even classify so I'll just say one right one wrong for mythology in general In geology, what M word of French origin um, accumulation of debris in a glacier? Uh, moraine or mor morass? Moraine? I always get those mixed up. I think it's moraine. Yeah. I don't know. What is a morass? Um, okay. What is the partner question to moraine? Geology. Okay. So geology, etymology. Yeah. Geology and etymology. Yeah, okay. Science, geology, etymology. One right, one wrong. The title of a second single from Ariana Grande involves adding up which two numbers? The title's 2 plus 2? I don't know. 34 plus 35. What the what is that? All right, so I got both Ariana Grande questions wrong. Pop music post 2010. Phoebe Judge is the host of two podcasts. One is a show about people who've been doing wrong. The other investigates life. Okay, no chance. Criminal and this is love. Okay, niche entertainment podcasts. Too wrong. I have, as you can see, I've not gotten a single podcast question right. Uh, in which nineteen fifty three play by Arthur Miller is John Proctor, The Crucible. Uh, that was Death of a Salesman was the partner. So literature American, literature American. Uh, here we go. 
The mountain formerly known as Mount McKinley is now called, okay, Denali. So that's Geography American, and the other one is Allure, so Geography World. Geography World got one, and Geography American got one. By the way, if you're wondering what the difference between uh, geography and then versus geography slash travel, geography by itself means you get, you, most people get that answer from tradition, just re, just studying plain geography, like seeing it on a computer or a map and remembering it. That's pure geography. Geography slash travel to me is you could have learned it either through traditional means or you could have learned it just from your being in different parts of the world. I'll give an example. Um, like, um, Gates of the Arctic Park in Alaska, to me, is a pure geography question. Um, I'm not saying people haven't been there. I'm sure plenty of people who are into travel and in, are, are from Alaska uh, may know it from personal experience, but to, like that number should be relatively few. So that, to me, is a pure ge I would classify that as geography American. Um, but something like, um, what river is Louisville on? That to me, I would classify as geography American travel because someone like me who does not know that from life experience, I would know that fact strictly by studying geography. But you can also arrive at that if you don't, if you just happen to live around the area at all, and that's a sizable population, that metropolitan area. Uh, not only Louisville, but all of Ohio, Southern Ohio. So that to me is a geography slash travel question. It's a, it's a small distinction, but I, I like for me personally, like I have done, a, I know a lot more geography clues from studying them versus traveling because I, I admittedly, I, I'm only a little traveled, not as much as some of my teammates who would be better at getting it, deducting it through those means. So that's the difference between those. To what historical leader is the phrase l'état c'est moi, um, Louis Fourteenth? Yep. So history world. And then the other one was Julius Caesar for that one. So history world political or just straight world? No, political, because we're talking about we're talking about like the actual leaders. So consider an exemplar of mathematical beauty. Euler's identity is ex is um, e to the i pi equals is it positive one or negative one? E to the i pi minus e to the i pi plus 1 equals 0. So it equals negative 1. Yeah. Uh, and then that one, the partner question was the e, so it's math. Two right. Two word answer. Which soccer team in Spain's La Liga? Um, same thing. I'll say Real Madrid because it's obviously two words. Yep. And this one, unlike Manchester City, I don't actually even know what the other Madrid team would be. It's or the other real team would be for that matter. Um, sports soccer. That's such a cheap get. I don't really consider that soccer knowledge at all, but whatever. Nickel Boys and Underground Railroad are by uh, Colson Whitehead. Okay, what's the companion to that one? Just looking for an author? Looking for an, oh, oh, yeah, Margaret Atwood. Okay, Literature, American Current, and Literature World. Literature World, got that one, and Literature, American Current, got that one. Also, okay, yeah, that's right. From 2006 to seven until uh, Kobe wore 24, oh my God, eight, that's stupid. Basketball. I have, I'm 33 and 0 in basketball. All is true is the alternative title of a play co-written by Fletcher and Shakespeare in 1612's common name, English Monarch. Okay, so just any of the English Monarch Shakespeare plays. Does all is true ring any hints? Henry V, I'll say, because he's, I don't know, he's known for gallantry, maybe, I don't know. Henry VIII, okay, we got the Henry right, but 
Uh, so I got both. I got the Shakespeare one wrong and the other one too, right? What was the what was the answer to that? Um, noble Kingsman. So literature British. Literature British. Too wrong. Among all winners of MPL, one pair of recipients shares a surname. Um, 1904 France poetry, 1945 Chile poetry. Mistral, right? Yeah, Mistral. Nice. Okay, so literature world um, women, because that's the only one that helped me. I got that one. And then the other one was the Nobel Peace Prize one, right? So probably history world. Let's go back and look at it. Um, Williams. Yeah, history world women. No, that's... Political. You might be wondering what the subcategory women means and why I'm not calling that one women. It doesn't necessarily mean that the answer is a woman. Uh, for this exercise, the subcategory women is, in my opinion, something that a woman is more likely to know just on the basis of living life as a woman. Yeah, my team currently, we need to, we need to, um, we need to bring in some women who would be much more quick on those. So that's why, like, to me, like, you should just know a woman leader, regardless of if you're a woman or not. So it would not classify as that. And in my case, I didn't know it, but that's not because I'm not a woman. It's just because I didn't know that topic. What is the five-letter name of the largest object in the Kuiper Belt? In the Kuiper Belt? In the Kuiper Belt? What the fuck? Mm, Syria. We got nothing. Oh my! Woo! That's a that's almost a trick question. All right, all right, all right. That's that's stupid on my part. Okay. Um, science, astronomy. Got the first one. Missed that one. One and one. Eighteen ten. Uh, in addition to being a two-time recipient of Best Actor, which film star also received a Best Supporting Actor for Terms of Endearment? Jack Nicholson, right? Yeah. Okay, so film 80s. And then the other one was based in the 70s, I want to say. The uh, Ingrid Bergman one. Yeah, okay. Film 80s. Get. Film 70s, not get. Okay. Which Canadian province uh, depicts a bison? Okay. So one of the prairies, obviously. Alberta? I'll say Alberta. Could be Saskatchewan. Uh, no, I'll, say, I'll stick with Alberta. Manitoba. Okay, neither of my guesses. Um, geography, world... Vexillology, Cult geography world, culture world, vexillology, I would say. Missed both. Red Hot Chili Peppers, Heim, and Doors are musical acts from what, what, from what city? Um, Los Angeles? Yep. And then the other one was uh, asking about Seattle, so... Uh, let's see. I probably know that one from 90s. I probably know Seattle from 90s or 60s. Hendrix and Doors. Well, I'll call that both. That's both decades. That, okay. Uh, okay. I got both of those. So that to me is an example of my knowledge could have arrived at it from either the 90s band in the case of, uh, Red Hot Chili Peppers or, um, or Soundgarden. But I vaguely thought I could get there from Jimi Hendrix or The Doors, which would be 60s, and that would be more applicable for someone else to know it uh, through 60s knowledge. So that to me is a perfect example of why I would 
want to classify it as both. Confusingly, in Britain, a Milky Way is a confectionery treat containing nougat without caramel wrapped in milk chocolate. Uh, Three Musketeers. I, I already, that's like my favorite candy bar. I would never get that one. All right. So, and then let me let me score this first, and then I'll do the spares. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. 21, 22, 23. 64 minus 23 equals 41. Pretty good game. Um, and then let's do the spares. Japanese uh, uh, Naomi Osaka was what French fashion house? Mm, let's go with let's go with Dior. Vuitton, okay. Um, fashion and cosmetics. See, that maybe I would call women because, like, it's, it's just, there's a good chance that that might just be an auto get for some people. A former member of all new Mickey Mouse Club, what actress played uh, Carrie, uh, Carrie Russell was her name? Yeah. Um, TV. Oh, no, I got that. Uh... What was the first name of husband of, I'm going to guess this is saying Marie Curie, yeah. Um, Pierre, it's easy. Okay, um, oh my god, what's with the formatting here? Wait, let me classify them, Pierre Curie one first. Science, chemistry contributors, no, what they do is technically, is that, what's it? What they do is technically physics. No, it is technically chemistry, I guess. Uh, chemistry contributors. Okay. Biophilia, Volnacura, Utopia, are three. Uh, no idea. Bjork. Okay. Uh, I don't know why it's doing that, but. So that would be pop music recent, so post 2010. Okay, so I'm done with that one, and I let's I start the three minute mark. Plus, I spent about two minutes yapping about shit, so that's five minutes to take away from my session time of 37, which means this method took me 32 minutes. That's even better than I would have guessed. I I was shooting for 40, but I did it in 32, so that's awesome. That is an efficiency improvement of almost 40 percent, like let's say 35 percent. And I, I think we can tell that this new method is way better. It's a combination of both. Doing, um, when you catalog each one as you go, it's too slow, the back and forth. But when you answer them all and then catalog them all, it kind of gets caught in the, kind of gets caught in the grind where you have to do it every time. This method is the best of both worlds. I knock out the first half. And then the second half, you can see sometimes, like, 25 to 30 percent of the time I do have to go back remember what it was the partner clue or if they're just different enough I have to categorize them in different things but 70 percent of the time like um like this Jack Nicholson one I was like oh I immediately remember what the partner question was it's on my catalog sheet it's either in the same exact category or very close to it and bam bam I can just put in two numbers at once so because I'm saving a poop load of time on 70% of them, it ends up being about 35% more efficient, which is pretty awesome. So I'm really glad I found this. Alphabetize. We'll move this over to the done pile. And yeah, good exercise. Very good exercise. Glad I uh, did that little experiment.